My name is Clay Eason, and uh, it started probably my wife had just had a baby, and the I couldn't lift my son at all, and it just anytime I tried to work out, there was sh really sharp, severe pain in in the shoulder region. So I went got a an MRI of it and had a slap lesion tear. I've already had one in my right arm from playing baseball, so I kind of knew the process. Um, but there was just a lot of pain inside the shoulder and any type of lifting over five pounds. I tried to work through it to start with, still tried to keep the weight training up, um, but again, it was just a lot of pain anytime I lifted anything slightly heavy. Um, went to see Dr. Farrell, and he suggested, well, he gave the diagnosis and this is what he suggested for surgery. Um, I didn't even question, uh, there was no reason to get a second opinion. Clay is a uh, former professional baseball pitcher who came to me complaining of uh, several months of left shoulder pain. Uh, he really is a quite uh, a fit athlete uh, and was complaining of pain uh, with certain motions uh, and pain at nighttime as well. And the two main places he had pain, uh, one was up on top of the shoulder and one was a pain that was much deeper down in the shoulder that he experienced with particular motions, um, especially overhead motions. He also was having some clicking or catching sensation inside the shoulder joint. So his uh, physical exam uh, and his x-rays were consistent with uh, arthritis of the AC joint as well as a tear of the superior labrum. So what is that? So if we look at a model of the shoulder, and this is a model of the right shoulder, uh, the AC joint is right here, and that is made up of the acromion, which is part of your shoulder blade, and the end of the clavicle, or the collarbone. And so it's not uncommon, especially in fit weightlifters, uh, to get some arthritis uh, and inflammation in that joint um, that is quite debilitating. Uh, he also uh, had a tear as I stated of the labrum. So what's the labrum? So if we look at a different model, uh, the shoulder is a ball in a socket. The socket is a part of your shoulder blade, your scapula, and this is a, a model of the glenoid, the socket. And this socket has a ring of tissue around it called the labrum and the labrum helps to hold the ball in place uh, and it's also the anchor point for one of your biceps tendons so as you know the biceps muscles are the muscles in front of the arm one of the tendons uh, of the bi of those two muscles one of those tendons comes up and goes through a groove you see this model of the shoulder you see this this is the depiction of the biceps tendon going up through this groove and it goes into the joint and it actually attaches right at that 12 o'clock position. So he had both a tear of the superior labrum, the top of the labrum, and he also had arthritis in that AC joint. So we started off with some uh, non-operative treatment. We, we tried uh, some selective cortisone injections. He had a, an injection into the AC joint, which worked for a while, uh, but then the pain came back. Uh, we tried an anti-inflammatory, we tried physical therapy, uh, and we tried a period of rest and activity modification, uh, but all of those were, were not successful. So then uh, we talked about surgical intervention. I went, had the surgery, and um, again, I mean, in, within a month, I was significant, significantly better. Um, yeah, I, I just cannot speak enough of the process, um, the attention to detail, everything that was involved. And so the surgery for these two issues uh, entailed the following. For the AC arthritis, uh, we can go in arthroscopically through just some small poke holes, and basically you just clean out the joint and you provide more room there by resecting part of the collarbone. Uh, and what'll happen over time is as we preserve the ligaments that stabilize the end of the collarbone, we preserve those um, the most important of those is the ligament at the top and at the back and we preserve those. And that area will fill in with some soft scar tissue and then you don't have that grinding when you move your shoulder, which is so painful. And then for the labrum, there are several different options you can, you can do surgically. But for him, we chose to 
clean out the labral tear and to move the biceps uh, down the arm and reattach the biceps tendon in the front of the arm here. That's called the biceps tenodesis. Uh, and the, the beauty of that is that you can move the shoulder uh, as much as you want immediately after surgery, the very next day. You have no range of motion restrictions. You can move your elbow uh, as much as you want. We just have a lifting restriction uh, of about a pound for the first six weeks after surgery. They're in a sling only for a short period of time, really only for comfort. Um, and at this, uh, we start working on physical therapy right away, working on shoulder and elbow range of motion. And then um, at the six week mark, we start strengthening the biceps again. And it really is a very quick recovery. And Clay has done very, very well after this surgery. So after surgery, um, he gave a, a detailed plan of what he expected for me. Um, and he knows that I, I guess he could sense in our conversations I'm pretty I like to get back in the gym I like to you know stay active uh, but he gave that detailed plan I followed it and since then I have I can say I have not had one ounce of problem um, I would I don't know the exact timetable but I would say probably two months I was a hundred percent back to normal um, it's never felt better and that's I think it's been th two or three years now um, but the amount of pain that I was in, and no one ever wants to go through surgery um, because there's always risk. Um, I would do it again in a heartbeat based upon pain relief and just the amount of uh, success I've had in using that arm after the surgery.